Hey guys, we are now into mid-October and I'm well into my autumn or fall planting of my hardy annual seeds and today I'm going to be planting stock. For anyone that doesn't know, my name is Peggy and I am growing a cut flower garden here on my allotment in Kanagawa Prefecture, Japan, which is just south of Tokyo in USDA Zone 9B. Thanks for checking out my channel. Okay, so I grew stock last year and had um, mixed success with it. Because I did it in two plantings, I did an autumn planting of my apricot stock, which is this one. And then I did a spring planting of a couple of others. I had some um, apple blossom stock, some field yellow stock, and the vintage brown, which I really liked. Now, my autumn sown stuff came up really nicely and I loved it. It was quite small. Um, but we do get hot here very quickly, so I think that's what caused it to not quite be. I mean, you look at the picture and this is a full thing. I had maybe the top six flowers. <laughs> um, but the smell is lovely. I mean, you hear people say that stock has a lovely smell and you think, okay, like, um, you know, hyacinths or daffodils, you know, these have a really strong, sweet smell. And this doesn't. It has a really subtle but spicy smell, um, kind of like cloves or cinnamon. It's really different and really, really nice and in no way overpowering. So I really liked it. I also had a nice long stem length and the vase life on it was unbelievable. I couldn't believe how long these were looking absolutely beautiful and they continued to bloom. Um, the other flowers would open up while it was in the vase, which I haven't had many things do so far. So I really, really liked it. The problem was um, stock needs a long, cold time to put out its foliage and get tall. As soon as the days get longer and it gets a little bit of heat, it will go to flower. No matter how long the stem is, it'll go to flower as soon as it gets the longer day. So you really need to give this a long growing period. And in my climate, in zone 9B where I am, we have a very, very short spring. It goes from cold to really, really hot very quickly, like literally over the space of two weeks. And so everything that I had grown in the spring just didn't have time to fully develop. Um, I then stupidly left it in the ground thinking, oh well, if it can survive the summer, it might come up in autumn. Don't know why I thought that, but I did. And it ended up just becoming a little hiding place for the Japanese beetle, which went on to completely destroy all of the aster in my garden. So um, this year I am doing everything as spring sown stock and I need to get it out of the ground before um, kind of end of May, beginning of June, which is when the beetle come because I don't want them in my garden again. So everything is going in as an autumn sown flower this year. So I still have some of my um, seed left over from last year. I actually ended up buying two packets of apricot stock, which I'm really happy about because I really liked the colour of this one. Um, so I've still got a full packet of that. And then these two, which was the apple blossom and the, um, what's this one, field yellow? Miracle yellow. Uh, I still have a few seeds left, so I'm going to just plant them up and see if they come. They might not because it's older seed, but I'm going to try them. And then I've got the vintage brown, which was by far my favourite colour. I really, really liked this. Um, so I've got a full packet of that, although it doesn't sound like there's actually that many seeds in there. As well as that, before um, I found the nice vintage brown one, I couldn't really find anything locally because I have to buy all of my seeds here now. I'm not allowed to import them. So I have um, this one, which is called... Christmas pink for some reason. Christmas is pink. Um, so I've got that one and then I've just got this kind of mix of pastel -y colours which aren't really my thing but I loved having the stock and they'll go nicely with the other spring flowers in the garden at the time. So I am going to get all of these planted. So if you've watched my previous videos that I've done um, just in the last couple of weeks where I was sewing my uh, what was I sewing? My snapdragon and I did some rubecchia and some um, achillea um, I, you'll know that I am doing things a little bit differently. So last year I grew everything ugh, in pots like these um, and I found it not great. I couldn't bottom water so I was having to top water which led to a lot of wetting off. Um, I had to have lots of different types of flowers in the same tray and they were germinating at different times and therefore I went to take the humidity dome off, got a bit confusing and some of them ended up wetting off because of that. Um, and they're just not very good um, and they break easily, they bend in the middle, they're not a sturdy one. So I have changed what I'm growing in and I found these online. So these have, they're just little 12 trays which is perfect because that's closer to the amount that I need for my tiny garden, it's only 4 by 5 meters. 
Um, and I love that they're see-through so I can see if things are starting to get root bound or if anything's growing. Um, I'm always really interested to know what's going on under the soil. So I love that these are see-through and I can see through them and they are quite a strong plastic, you know, you've really got to pull them to get them to bend. So I'm liking that. They came in their own little tray so I can take this out, put water in and bottom water and it does have the correct bits um, for bottom watering so that uh, the soil can naturally soak up the amount of water that it needs and I'm not over watering my plants. And then it came with its own little humidity dome. Now these don't click on, um, a lot of people think that they should click on, but they don't, they just kind of rest on. I mean, there's a little lip there, they're not gonna fall off straight away, but they're by no means like vacuum sealed on. Uh, and then they have a little vent at the top so I can change how much air is getting into the plants. So I am planting all of my seeds in these this year and hoping that this will lead to better germination and just me being able to control the growing conditions a lot more than I could last year. Okay, so I've started by filling all of my trays already with dampened soil. Now I just get a big bucket of my potting soil and wet it so that when you pick it up, if you squeeze it really hard, you might get one or two drops, but not much, but then it stays in a ball if you open your hand. And that just means that I know that the soil is soaked thoroughly all the way through and I don't need to water this once the seeds are in. Most of the seeds I'm sowing are really, really tiny. And if you try and water it after you've put them in, um, there's a risk you're gonna displace them or they're just gonna wash away completely. You kind of mess up all your neat work. So I always recommend using pre-moistened soil this way. With stock, they don't want light to be excluded, so but they don't want to just sit right on top of the surface either. So I'm just gonna make a small, Kind of bed for them, a little dent in there. Um, and I'll put one seed in that little dent, but I won't then cover it in soil. Now, one thing I did learn last year is that there isn't much foliage and stuff going on with your stock. They really are just kind of one big stem coming up with leaves coming off of that stem, which means you can plant them quite closely together. Now, if you were doing this in your garden, you might want to leave a bit more space, but because I'm doing them purely for cutting, um, I want these to be a bit closer together. So I'm actually going to go ahead and put two seeds, if I have enough seeds, two seeds into each cell. Um, and that should be okay for spacing when I then put them out into the garden. With uh, my apricot stock, I'm going to do a full a tray with my vintage brown. I'm going to do a full tray because I really like them with um, these two, which are the Christmas pink and the mix. I'm not hugely in love with them. <laughs> um, and like I say, it's a small garden. So I'm going to do half of each. So that'll be six cells of one and six cells of the other, but with two seeds in each cell. And I'll do the same with these ones because I don't have very much of this seed left. And I'm not actually sure if this is going to germinate because it is now one year old seed. So again, I'll do six cells of each of these and just see if I get anything from them. So let's get planting. These wee tools came free with the boxes when I ordered them and they're actually really handy. This one's for making holes. You just saw me putting all my seed on there. These ones are for when you need to take them out, either pull them out that way or scoop them out that way. Dead handy wee things. <laughs> Okay, so that's me added them to my little seed pod out here, uh, which is really starting to fill up, which is great. You can see these are ones I planted a while back and the humidity domes are really doing their job. Um, so I am going to leave these in here until they germinate. When the first um, sprouts come up, shoots come up, I'll take the humidity domes off, but I'm going to leave them under here for protection through the whole winter. But when the sprouts do first come up, I am going to come back and I am going to select for doubles, which is something I didn't do last year. And if I was growing 
stock on mass in a field I will probably wouldn't do it either because the singles are still pretty and they do still smell nice but because I'm growing so few I can sit and pick out my um, doubles and my singles and I'm hoping that I have quite a lot of doubles last year most of them were doubles that came up um, which was great but this year I'm going to select for doubles so I'll come back and show you in a couple of weeks once these have um, started to get their sprouts and we will go through and see how you can tell which ones are singles and which ones are doubles. Okay, it's now been 13 days since I put these seeds in the mud. And as you can see, I've got really good germination on them. So these are my vintage brown, where I've got all but, I mean, they all germinated, but these two died off. Uh, these are my Christmas pink and my mixed stock. These are my apricot stock. And like I thought, these are my old seed. So this is the seed I got last year. I had a little bit left, um, but not much has happened there. Now, some of the, um, what one are you? Apple blossom, some of the apple blossom did come up, but then it very quickly died off. You can kind of see there's some brown ones in there. I am noticing right now that there's a few kind of fuzzy looking seeds in there. Now, when they do that it usually means they're about to germinate it kind of looks like they've gone moldy but they tend to go fuzzy and then they germinate and come up so i'm gonna leave this on and just see if i can get anything on these but i'm not really thinking i'm gonna get much from them but for these ones they're all here the domes have come off them and it is time to select for doubles so why select for doubles um i only grew stock for the first time last year and I had eight stock. I did most of it as spring sown stock and spring sown stock. And um, I didn't have much luck with that because my spring isn't very long here. It gets hot really, really quickly. So that's when I realized I'm gonna have to do all of my stock as fall sown stock. And last year I only had eight. I had eight of the apricot stock that I had sown in the autumn and put in the garden and it was beautiful and out of the eight that I planted only one of them actually came up as a single. Um, so I was really lucky but the difference between the single and the double I'll show you here. These are my ones from last year. It looks like a different plant. Now it's still quite pretty, it's just nowhere near as full and when you put the singles into a bouquet it does look a bit kind of shriveled and not quite right. <laughs> um, so I do want to spend the time this year, because I'm not growing that many, um, to sit and select for doubles. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. Some people say you can do it through the colour with the singles being a slightly darker colour than the doubles. And when I look at these I mean, you can kind of see it on some, maybe on this one. But I mean, you have to look really hard to be able to differentiate the colour on these. They do say if you um, kind of cold chill them a little bit, some people put them in the fridge. I don't know who these people are. I'm a family of five and, you know, there's not room for a bottle of tomato sauce in my fridge. Never mind four packs of seeds. So unless you have a giant fridge or you're, got, you're lucky enough to get a flower cooler. Um, I don't know how you're meant to do that, but they do say that if you put them in the fridge for a little while, then the colour becomes more apparent. Um, another thing they say is that the singles tend to grow smaller than the doubles, but again, yeah, that might be true, but I mean, it's a bit of guesswork. And there's no need to do that because there's a much easier way to do that, and that is by looking at the leaves. Now these aren't the true leaves, these are the leaves that come straight out of the seed before they put on true leaves. Um, and if you look at these, it's really easy to tell which ones are singles and which ones are doubles. And this is a perfect example. This one here with two nice oval leaves, this is a double. And this one too, this is a double. This one where the leaves are fused together, that's a single. Double, single. So if we look over in this one, we've got two doubles, double, double. And then this one where the leaf is actually fused together, this is a single. So we're gonna get rid of this single. It's not always this obvious though. So in this cell, all three of these are actually singles. And although this one's really fused, this one is starting to separate and looks like it might 
turn into two leaves, um, but it's not. That's going to be a single. So all of those ones have to come out. The one next to it as well, I've got one double, but these two are both singles with their fused leaves. This one also, I think this is going to be a single because even though the leaves are open, they're not fused together, they aren't perfect ovals. They're more like a bow shape, if you can see. So if you look at the one behind, they're kind of mirror image of each other. I think that's also a double underneath. Um, you know, they've got nice round leaves, whereas this one, it's kind of like um, really cool 50s cat eye glasses. <laughs> So I'm going to take that one out because I think that one is also going to be a single. Because these are mixed up and there are singles and doubles in the same cell, I don't want to just go and pull them out because you might accidentally um, displace the roots of the doubles and I don't want to do anything to give these guys shock or to damage the roots. So I'm going to take my snips, which I have disinfected, and I'm just going to go through and on all the single ones, I'm just going to cut the heads off um, and that leaves the soil undisturbed. Okay, let's start with my vintage brown. Double, double, single. Mm, that's a single. Not sure about that one yet. That's a single. You see that one? It's almost got three leaves on it. <laughs> single, single. one too you can see it's not perfectly oval leaves they have these little dents in them so I think that one's gonna be a single so even though it's only slightly deformed I still think it's gonna give us a single this one too you can see the late leaves aren't perfect ovals they're slightly different shaped okay so this is what I've got left so what did look like a really good box is now roughly 50-50. I've got 17 singles and 18 doubles. So this is why it's really important to plant a lot more stock than you need if you're going to be um, selecting for doubles. So now I'm going to go through and do exactly the same for my mixed and what are these ones? Uh, my Christmas pink. So in that one, I got 22 singles and 20 doubles. So lastly, I've got my apricot stock. Apricots, apricots. So in my apricot, I got 17 singles and 25 doubles. It's a good one. Okay, so now I've taken all the singles out, you can see that I've got quite uneven boxes. I've got some cells that have nothing and then others that have two or three in them. So what I'm gonna do now is using this wee handy tool that I got in with these boxes, I'm gonna do some transplanting. So in the ones that have nothing in, I'm gonna take some of these very gently and put them into that one so that everything has a little bit more space. I'm gonna make room in there. very gently lift this out and just pop it right back in And there we go. And another.
Okay, these are all looking nicely spaced out uh, with room to grow on. So I'm going to pop these back into my um, little seed pod. I'm not going to put the lids on again, but I do zip up my little seed pod every night. I'm opening it during the day because it's still quite hot here during the day. Um, but I leave it open during the day and then zip it up at night to try and make sure that these guys are not getting too cold. And hopefully I will have lots of beautiful stock in the garden, double stock in the garden come spring. So thanks for following along. If you find this useful and you like what you see and you want to see how these do in the garden and when I pot them on and when I transplant them and all that jazz, then remember to hit the subscribe button below. If you want to see what I do with all the flowers that I cut, because I am still cutting flowers from the garden, uh, you can check out my Instagram page, which is from the witch's garden. And there's a link to that below this video. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.